Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So around two thousand five. Uh, so about a bit. Around five years ago, I started doing more and more Wayland, mm-hmm. and then it sort of snowballed. Um, mm-hmm. It started just filling off the void, and um, yeah. And it's still so much to do mm-hmm. in terms of getting things right. Like right now, color paint, which I don't think is a particularly big application. You can guess from the name what it is, even mm-hmm. if you're not familiar with it. Not all features of that work in Wayland right mm-hmm. now. There's that toolbar on the bottom with a color palette. Mm-hmm. If you click and you drag up, it explodes. Uh, and because it's one of those draggable windows, it's sort of that. Um, and we fixed that in Qt. We've got, that, we've got a proposed uh, protocol, which isn't approved. Um, we've just currently got support coming up in Quin 6 mm-hmm. and, and in Qt 6, 6 already. Uh, with support for fixing that, within Quinn, but but that's not enough. I mean, you want to fix things universally for it to be considered fixed. So we're still waiting on other implementations of that. And every single thing is just... Well, you, you can tell what's happened with Wayland. Instead of looking at the public API of SDL and Qt and saying, well, here are our requirements. It's very much right. starting with this minimal application and then going, we'll start here and then add everything as a case by case, solving a specific problem that comes up. So you feel like and it's you sort can of see designed it as... backwards. Yeah, in, in my, my opinion, uh, sure. it's certainly, I don't want to say backwards because that's maybe inflammatory, but I, I it's guess... not designed with trans- transition in place. It's not yeah, designed yeah. with that transition of moving existing clients. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the crux of it. If we've been designed by, let's look at all requirements of all existing applications. Start here and split things out so we can move and change things later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but start with this minimal thing, and then things like injecting keys. That's been going around in circles for ages. With, with oh, remote desktop needs to inject keys. Okay, we'll come up with something specific for remote desktop. Oh, accessibility needs to inject keys. Mm-hmm. Oh, come up with something specific for. For, for accessibility. Yep. Oh, uh, the, the input methods need to inject keys. Yep. And, yep. Specific for this. Yep. and we've ended up with multiple solutions to effectively the same problem. Mm-hmm. None truly as standard as they sh- universal as they should be. Because you've got the portals, you've got Libby I, and, yep. and they all sort of come together, but they're still in flux. Mm-hmm. And it's still uses case coming up with. You know, and now we've got enough test frameworks wanting to do the next thing, and all these use cases which are similar but subtly different. Mm-hmm. And you, you're ninety eight percent of the way there with all the way and stuff, but each of that remaining part requires so much work mm-hmm. that are uh, huge projects in their own. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying to like just say Wayland was like a disaster and stuff, but what I was really trying to say no. there was like. The idea is it wasn't designed around existing use cases. It was designed around this theoretical sort of improved desktop. Like, this is what we want to do, not how can we do something that improves upon what we have and that brings everything along with it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's fine. I mean, a bit depends on whether you expect x to exist around forever for all of these old old applications or whether they should bring, come along to Wayland and then start chopping things down afterwards. And I mean, I'm of the perspective that it's easy to get everyone to Wayland, do your splits you want to do, and then start chopping away mm-hmm. gradually at um, making things of, or oh, now we want to introduce a pop-up way and now we want to introduce a splash screen and now we want to do, do, that, do that afterwards. And session restoring for that window positioning. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't think it should be controversial that you should have a system in place. Have people use that. Intr- introduce your new system, like your introduce your session restore for your absolute window positioning. Mm-hmm. Wait a couple of years for people to opt into it and then remove the fallback mm-hmm. rather than not have a fallback right. and expect people to use something that doesn't exist and then make those people do work on implementing it because 
that doesn't work. And we do see a lot of the pe pe people making away with this The compositor developers aren't going out into your clients and then, okay, I'll help you make those Wayland changes. Mm -hmm. They focus on themselves. And, and there's only one person who has patches in GTK, SDL, and Wayland. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a GTK, SDL, and Qt. Mm -hmm. And that person's me. And that's kind of a... I looked it up. It's not, not, not meant as a brag. It's meant as a... Well, Everyone's a bit too inwardly facing. I think if you, what we should be in a position of, if someone implements a protocol for doing curses in a different way, yeah. that they then should be helping going into those other projects and actually doing that work. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing that. It's just that, yeah. There is a very small list of names that I can make. Like, the obvious mention is like Neil Gomper. Like, Neil does a lot of work in everywhere pretty much he's not big on the gnome side but like everything else like neil is like incredible i love neil's work um you got work you got people like dallas strauss doing incredible work as well but like this is a very very short list of people yeah yeah definitely i mean there's always a manpower is an issue with every project yeah yeah but, but... what uh... in... <laughs> so, go on I mean, Wayland just needs a bit more cohesion and working together towards that common goal mm -hmm. of we all want Wayland. Let's all make this happen rather than putting the tasks on other people. It requires let's mm -hmm. doing the work everywhere to bring the applications up. I think the big Even issue. Even survival projects. Mm. I think the big issue you have with with Wayland, and this is just a, it's just a natural problem of not having like a like a BDFL or some sort of clear leadership, is Wayland is very much designed by committee. Like, most FOSS projects are like this, but most FOSS projects don't have as wide a scope as Wayland. Like, I'm sure that there is a lot of bike shedding on random KDE projects where people have different ideas and how to do things, but everyone's trying to do KDE. Like, this is a, a very set... Like, you all agree... On like fundamental things, like we're gonna do this with Qt. We're gonna use yeah. like the KDE APIs. Like, you all agree on like basic things. The Wayland problem is that nobody agrees. The only thing people agree on is we're gonna make Linux better, which is fine. But there's a lot of ways to do that. Absolutely, and, and having people push in different directions is fine mm -hmm. as long as everyone listens to where I'm trying to push and then finds compromise. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that's lacking. And, and you're right, there's different perspectives. People trying to push for a security model, mm -hmm. absolutely valid goal. People trying to push for compatibility, my goal is uh, if people trying to push for Wayland everywhere don't like want to necessarily rely on these portals and debug stuff that are known people are pushing for. And yeah, different sides. And it's, yeah, it's, it's tension and it will get there. I mean, things keep moving forward. That's my positive spin. 